Hello everyone and welcome to Boundless Dentistry. In this video, we'll talk about the classification system that is used for maxillectomy, which is the Aramanis classification of maxillectomy defects. Firstly, we'll start off with what actually is maxillectomy, then what is the importance of this maxillectomy system, and then discussing each of the classes that is present in this classification of maxillectomy. So let's get started. Now firstly talking about what actually is maxillectomy, if you divide this word into two parts, maxil is your maxilla and ectomy is the removal. So maxillectomy is removal of maxilla, but it can be of two types, either a segment or a part of maxilla is removed or the entire maxilla is removed. So it depends varying on the case to case. Now this Aramani's classification of maxillectomy is used for partially edentulous patients in which maxillectomy will be performed. It consists of six total classes which varies according to the anatomy and the prosthesis that will be used. Now, this Aramani's classification of maxillectomy is mainly used in prosthodontics for designing of an optimum obturator. Now, what is actually obturator? Obturator is a prosthesis that is used to close a congenital or acquired tissue defect. Now, for example, a patient is undergoing a surgery and before surgery is performed, for example, of maxilla, you have to plan how will that particular area where there is no longer any tissue place, how will it be closed. Now for that to happen, you have to design an obturator before you perform a surgery. So before surgery, you design a picture of an obturator in your mind and according to that, you perform the particular procedure and in this case, which is maxilla. So before you perform maxillectomy, you have to keep in mind how will that defect be closed, which helps in designing an optimum obturator. Now what are the objectives of obturator and how this will help in designing an obturator. First, the obturator that is used should be comfortable to the patient. If it's uncomfortable, the patient will complain of using it and it will lead to soft tissue and hard tissue irritation. When the obturator is used, it should restore normal speech, mastication, your chewing ability and deglutition, your swallowing ability. All these three functions should be restored when you're using obturator. Aesthetically, it should also be acceptable. Sometimes a part of your obturator is visible and if it's visible, it might not appeal aesthetic to the patient. So this, this is also to be kept in mind. And when the obturator is used, it should be stable, it should be retentive and it should be supportive enough so that it doesn't come off when you are performing speech, mastication and deglutition, which is swallowing. Now talking about Aramani's classification of maxillectomy defects, there are basically six classes. 1, 2, 3, 4, 5 and 6. We will discuss each of them in detail. Now firstly starting off with class 1. Class 1 is midline resection. You can see in this diagram, this is your heart palate's midline where the suture is present. Now when this part of the maxilla is removed along the midline, all this structure is removed. This is known as class 1 which is midline resection. Now when this resection is present, it, it is resected around the midline of the heart palate. The teeth are maintained on the one side of the arch. You can see how in, on this side of the arch, the teeth are maintained, but on this side of the arch, the teeth are removed along the midline. So for example, there must be any congenital or acquired tissue defect on this side. So all this area is resected. So this is class one. Now when this resection is performed, an obturator is designed, which you can see in this diagram, this entire region which was open is now restored by using an obturator. So when you perform a surgery, a space or a tissue that previously was present is removed and when it is removed, an obturator is designed to fill in that place and obviously the obturator should be retentive and supportive enough so that it doesn't come off. Now the second class is unilateral resection. You can see only on this side, unilaterally, you meaning on one side, the entire area is resected and some teeth anteriorly and on the opposite side posteriorly are remaining. So defect is present unilaterally and anterior teeth are retained on the contralateral side, which means that these anterior teeth on the opposite side of the arch are, are retained. And when this is the case, it's known as class 2 of Aramani's maxillectomy defect, which is unilateral resection. Now, when you are designing an obturator, as you can see in this diagram, support is taken from the remaining teeth that are present and this obturator is designed to close the space that is created by the surgery. So this is an important part. And the stabilizing component is your 
palette which is present over here. Now moving on towards class 3, class 3 is central resection. You can see in this diagram this is your hard palette and some part of your soft palette. Centrally this entire area is resected and when this is the case it is central resection. Centrally the hard palate is resected and some part of the soft tissue may or may not be involved and has to be resected depending on the pathology that has happened which leads to performing maxillectomy and third and important part in this case is that dentition is preserved. You can see all of the teeth are present and none of the teeth are removed. The, the different class, classes that are used in this RMNI's maxillectomy classification, it depends on the pathology that is present. Sometimes class 1 is used, 2, 3 and, and these are used according to the pathology that is present. Now for class 3, the obturator design is you can see over here. Support is taken from the remaining teeth. These are the abutment teeth and the defect is closed. So this is how an obturator is designed when class 3 of RMNI's maxillectomy is performed. Now class 4 of Aramani's maxillectomy classification is when bilaterally anterior posterior resection is performed. For, and you can see in this picture, this is your anterior part and posterior part. They are resected and it crosses the midline. So one side and the other side both are involved so bilaterally. So bilateral anterior and posterior resection is performed and this is class 4 of Aramani's maxillectomy classification. In this case, you can see that the defect crosses the midline. It has crossed the midline and both part of the maxilla are involved and only few teeth are remaining on the contralateral side. As you can see in this case, some premolar and molars are present. So this is Aramani's class 4 maxillectomy. For designing an obturator, you can see support is taken from all the teeth that are remaining and the entire defect is closed. When the entire posterior region of your maxilla is resected, this is known as class 5. You can see some anterior teeth are remaining but the entire posterior region has been resected. It is present bilaterally and some abutment teeth are present anteriorly and in this particular case hard palate is resected, posterior teeth are resected and some part of the soft palate is also resected. Now when an obturator is designed, you can see support is taken from these teeth and from the anteriorly a little portion of the hard palate is remained and an obturator is designed to close the defect. Now lastly talking about class 6, class 6 anterior resection. In this case you can see this dark red region, this is the region that has been resected and posteriorly teeth remain. For example in this case premolar and molars are present, most of the hard palate is present and soft palate is also present. This class 6 is rare and it mostly occurs due to either trauma or some congenital defect. When designing an obturator, you can see the support is taken from the abutment teeth, for example in this case premolars and molars, and this anterior defect is closed. So this is class 6 of Aramani's maxillectomy classification. So in this video we talked about Aramani's classification of maxillectomy, what basically is maxillectomy and what is an obturator, what are the basic objectives of obturator that are to be kept in mind before you design an obturator and before you start your surgery you know that some area of the maxilla has to be removed you think of an obturator which should be optimum and it should be designed in your mind before you perform the surgery so that optimal obturator can be designed and the space that is created by the surgery is closed and then we talked about in detail the different classifications class 1, 2, 3 and so on that are present in this classification. So I hope this video was useful for you and if you like this video please like, share, subscribe and press the bell icon. Thank you for watching this video. See you next time.